Hey, what's up coders? I'm Coderius and today we're going to draw the motherboard set on Unity. Again. Uh, yes, again. But this time we will use a compute shader. Compute shaders are programs that are executed directly on the GPU. It fully uses their parallel computing power. The code will be written in high-level shading language or HLSL. It comes directly from the DirectX API. The code will be more or less the same as what we did last time, save for some instructions that are specific for compute shaders. So if you haven't watched the previous video, there is a link in the description. Before we start, take a moment to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. I see you in Unity. I use the 2020 version of Unity, but any version should do it, as we use only the basic functions of the program. Like in the previous episode, we will need a Canva. Let's change the scale mode to scale with the screen and the size to 1920 to 1080. First difference with our previous version, we won't use a standard image, but a raw image. We will see why in a moment. Let's also center that image and stretch it so it fits nicely into the screen. We can then add a new c script to the Canva. Let's name it Mandelboard CS for Compute Shader and open it in Visual Studio. To use raw images, we need to add the UI library. We can then define our variables. Most of them are similar to the one used in the previous version of the program. We need the width and the height, and the real and imaginary starting point in our complex plane. No, not that plane. That plane. We keep the max iterations which define the number of time the iteration is run on each pixel and the zoom value. Now comes the new stuff, the stuff related to compute shaders. So what a big surprise, we create a compute shader and name it shader. The compute shader object from Unity is used as an interface to link data, files and instructions between Unity and the actual compute shader that we will write later on in HLSL. So it's not the actual compute shader, but, re but a representation of it in Unity. Next we need a compute buffer. The compute buffer is used to pass data from our Unity memory onto the GPU memory. We need also a render texture on which we will set the different color points of the Mandelboard set and a reference to the raw image from our interface. Finally, we need a data structure to pass information from the memory onto the GPU through the compute buffer. For that, we create a struct that we can call data struct. Here we put the information that we want to copy. Quite simple, we just want the necessary information to run our Mandelboard escape function. We will get to that later if you haven't watched the previous video. So in our struct, we put the width and the height, the real start, the imaginary start, as well as the dimensions of our screen. With that, we can define an array of data struct that will fit the compute buffer. Cool. So that was a lot of new elements, but you will see everything will make sense at the end. Now that we have the base structure, it's time to initiate our variables. Let's give a width of 4.5 and define our height as a ratio of the width based on the screen resolution. Default R start value is minus 2.0 and the default I start value is minus 1.25. As we run the program on the GPU, we can be a bit more aggressive with the max iterations and assign a value of 500 to start with. The zoom function will be a bit different this time, so we assign a factor of 0.5 as a float. We can then initiate our data struct array with a size of 1 and pass on the values of our default Mandelboard set. Next comes the compute buffer. The constructor takes two parameters. The first parameter is the size of the array we place in the buffer, so we can use here data.length. The second parameter is the size of the package that is being sent through the buffer. For that we need to go back to the fundamentals and look at the size of the variables. A quick Google search will tell you that a double has a size of 8 bytes and an integer has a size of 4 bytes. Our data struct has 4 doubles and 2 integers, therefore a size of 40 bytes. We can then initiate our render texture with the screen width and screen height. The third parameter is the depth buffer or Z buffer for drawing perspective. Our image is flat so we can use a value of 0 here. To finish the initialization of our render texture we need to set the parameters enable random write to true so that it works together with the compute shader. We can then create the texture. Alright coders, we can now create the actual compute shader. For that let's go back to the Unity interface. Right click in your project and select Compute Shader in the Shader category. Let's call it Mandelboard Shader and open it in Visual Studio. 
we have left the C-sharp world and are entering the HLSL universe. The language is however C-like and should not be totally foreign. There is a link to the HLSL page of the DirectX API in the description with more information about the language. The first line is the name of our program. We will use this to reference the code later in Unity. Next, we need to tell the GPU about the data structure we are using so we can copy-paste the struct we've used in the c -sharp script. We also need a reference to our compute buffer declared in Unity. In HLSL, it's called a structured buffer. We also use a read-write texture 2D, which takes the form of an array of float vectors. It represents the RGB colors and the alpha of each pixel. This will be the output from the shader to the render texture from Unity. For the sake of the example, I've intentionally left the max iterations as a separate variable to show you how we can copy single variables from Unity to the GPU. Now comes the main compute shader code. It starts with the number of threads, that will be used in the parallel computing. I'm not the expert in the field, but 20 threads seem to be the fastest results with my GPU. You will probably have to tweak these numbers depending on your own equipment. Note that the name of the function is the same as the kernel from the beginning. The input parameter of the function is just a reference to the current thread used by the GPU. In the compute shader, we will put our now famous Mandelbrot escape function. The function is now optimized to reduce the load from heavy operations related to complex numbers. I'll cover optimizations and some more theory about what we're doing here in the next video. We start by declaring our real and imaginary start and copies on which we will do operations. We also want to declare offsets to take into account the position of the pixel on the screen. The new notations IDX and IDY indicate the position of the pixel on the screen. We take the value from the compute buffer to calculate the offset. Here we simply take the position of the pixel on the screen and scale it with the width and the height of our complex plane. We also initiate a counter to return the number of times we run the iteration on each pixel. Next, we create a new float4 vector to store our colors as the coloring will be done within the compute shader. Last step of the initialization is to apply the offset to the real start and imaginary start. So we initiate our variables with the values from our compute buffer and the offsets we've just calculated. Finally comes our Mandelbrot escape function, which will exit when the sum of the x coordinate square and the y coordinate square is larger than 4. This is an important optimization which reduces the number of complex operations to be performed by the machine. I'll try to summarize the math behind in the next video. For now, let's just use this code. Last but not least, the coloring function. It is essentially the same as in the previous video. We take the modulo 16 of the number of iterations and assign a color to it. This gradient theme comes from Ultrafractal and is explained on Stack Overflow. There are links in the description. The last step is to assign the color to the current pixel and return it. And voila, that's the end of our function. Congrats, you've just coded the compute shader. All right, let's go back to the c -sharp script and wire everything up. Back in our main c -sharp script, we can create a new void function and call it Mandelbrot. It takes no parameter. First, we need to link the compute shader we just brought with Unity using the find kernel function. Next, we can start providing data to our compute shader and compute buffer. We call the setData function on the buffer and give the array we've created earlier as parameter. Then we link the buffer to the shader using the function setBuffer. We can also pass other variables onto the shader using other setters. There are various setters. Check the Unity documentation in the link below for all of them. That way, we pass our max iterations and texture onto the shader. Now that everything is set up properly, we can call the dispatch function on our compute shader. This will actually execute the shader. We give the kernel handle and the number of thread groups we want to use as parameters. As we've used 24 threads in the HLSL compute shader, the parameters will be the screen width and screen height divided by 24. Last parameter is 1. I'll try to shed some light on the technicality of these different parameters in another video. Finally, the shader has rendered our texture, so we can copy it back as the main material of our raw image. There is one last important thing we have to do. You're used to Unity and c -sharp doing the garbage collection for you, but the shader language is a low-level language, and freeing up memory of unused objects needs to be done manually. Our compute buffer takes some space in memory, and we have to release it. 
For that, we use the onDestroy function from the game object and simply, simply get rid of the compute buffer with the dispose function. Awesome, let's give it a try and see if everything works fine. Don't forget to drag and drop the compute shader and the raw image to the c -sharp script in Unity. Everything is running smoothly, awesome! Last thing we need is the possibility to export the fractal. Like in the previous video, we will have three functions. One to recenter the screen, one to zoom in, and one to zoom out. Let's go back to Visual Studio and start coding. We can start with the center screen function. It is a void function as it does not return anything. There are some operations here to recenter the screen. We just add the mouse position minus half of the screen dimension and scale to our complex plane dimension. Next step is very important. We need to update the data we pass onto the compute shader. We can then call the model board function again to render the image. Then the zoom functions. They are again more or less the same as what we did last time, but this time we also want to increase the number of iterations as we zoom in and decrease when we zoom out. For that we can use the increment variable we declared at the beginning. With that we calculate the zoom factor based on the current dimensions, the zoom factor and the time the delta time value from Unity as this will run in our update function. These factors are applied to the width, the height, and the complex plane variables. Only half is applied to R start and I start to keep the image centered. Same as in our center screen function, we must update the value in our struct and finally render the image again with the model board function. The zoom out function is more or less the same as the zoom in, we just invert the signs. We can now use these functions in the update function of the game object. Use your preferred input keys. I personally use the middle mouse button to recenter, the left mouse button to zoom in, and the right mouse button to zoom out. Note the difference between get mouse button for the zooming and get mouse button down for centering the screen. Okay, let's give it a try. Awesome! We did it! I mean, you did it! By following this tutorial, you will now be able to explore this amazing fractal. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't done already, please give a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time!